Hi, I'm Paul Torgerson. It's Friday, February 15th, 2019, and this is a look at the information security news from overnight. From ZDNet, hackers have used a two-year-old vulnerability in a software package used by remote IT support firms to deploy the GandCrab ransomware on those companies' customer workstations. The vulnerability used by the hackers impacts the Kaseya plugin for the ConnectWise managed software. ZDNet has the details. From ThreatPost, the Emotet Trojan has seen a spike in activity in the last month with a campaign that once again showcases its ability to evolve quickly. Emotet is now being delivered via embedded macros inside XML files disguised as Word documents. With such constant changes in tactics, the Emotet Trojan campaign is expected to continue to evolve and become more sophisticated. From SC Magazine, Researchers developed a proof-of-concept attack which allows them to hide malware in Intel's software guard extensions. Found on all modern Intel CPUs, this feature allows developers to isolate applications in secure enclaves. And now attackers can hide malicious code in those same enclaves. See the SC Magazine article for details and links to the proof-of-concept. From ZDNet, one of the facial recognition databases that the Chinese government is using to track their Muslim population in the Zhejiang region has been left open on the internet for months. The database belongs to a Chinese company named SenseNets, which provides video-based crowd analysis and facial recognition technology. The information includes extensive personal information as well as detailed location tracking. And last this week from Gizmodo, Coffee Meets Bagel spent Valentine's Day performing one of the most intimate acts a company can engage in, informing its users of a data breach. The breach includes name and email addresses stored in the app prior to May 2018. In a related story earlier in the week, the Register reported that a dark web vendor was offering data from more than 6 million Coffee Meets Bagel accounts for 0.13 Bitcoin, about $460, before the marketplace was taken down. And that's all for me this week. Have a fantastic weekend, and until Monday, be safe out there.